You can feed huge societies of people without any beasts of burden. And the way they did that was with a secret ingredient, maize. Nowadays, when we plant corn, we usually plant it by itself when we plant it in rows, but Native Americans actually would not do that. The traditional Native American method used by Iroquois tribes is a little bit different, and that's what we're going to show you today. So the Native Americans would not plant their corn by itself, and they wouldn't plant it in straight rows either. Instead, they would plant it in clusters together with two other plants, um, two specific plants actually, beans and squash. And the really cool thing is that those three plants actually work together to supply nutrients to each other, to protect each other, and then the foods that they produce, squash and beans and corn, actually work together to provide more complete human nutrition, which is really pretty amazing considering that the Iroquois didn't know anything about amino acids or complex carbohydrates or things like that, and yet they found and implemented this incredibly ingenious solution that supplies complete plant-based proteins and really great nutrition. So that's pretty darn cool. So here's the way that that works. Corn is a grass. Corn needs huge amounts of nitrogen to grow. The way we solve this problem in the modern world is that when the corn gets a little bit higher, we'll put nitrogen fertilizer down the middle of each row, and then the corn roots will reach out, find the nitrogen, and then have the energy that they need to grow. Of course, the Native Americans did not have nitrogen fertilizer, so what they used is natural fertilizer through the bean plant. Beans actually pull nitrogen out of the air and put it into the soil, and so that supplies a natural nitrogen fertilizer for the corn. Pretty darn cool. Meanwhile, the corn also helps the beans because the corn has a corn stalk and the beans need something to grow up and twine around to provide support. It's a vine, and so the corn stalk provides that. So the beans help the corn, the corn helps the beans. Meanwhile, what the squash does is the squash plays defense. Squash has very large and broad leaves and it grows out all over the place. Those large, broad leaves help to retain soil moisture and then they also prevent a lot of weed growth because the sunlight can't get to the weeds. So that's pretty great too. It gets even better than that though. Raccoons love corn and they will totally raid your cornfield and they would totally raid an Iroquois cornfield, but they can't. And I'll tell you why. Squash barbed wire. Squash vines are actually barbed. They have little prickles on them and the raccoons hate walking over that. They hate it, they won't do it. If you have a corn patch that's surrounded by squash, the raccoons won't cross the squash and go eat your corn. So I guess you could say that what we're going to do with this patch right here behind me is we're going to try to turn it into a World War I style, barbed wire infested wasteland war zone that a raccoon would never dare cross. So what we've got here is we have a bunch of squash plants. Like I said, they're actually pumpkin plants, but pumpkin is a type of squash, so it counts. And then what I've done in the middle of each four corn plants is I've put a little hill of dirt. And then there's hills all the way down there, right to the end, about uh, 50 feet or so. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four holes in the mound. And I'm going to put two or three corn seeds in each hole. Then they're going to grow up together. And hopefully they'll be able to pollinate each other. That's kind of the dicey situation because it's in a long row. It would be a lot better if I had uh, more corn from side to side. Um, but we're just going to have to chance it. We're going to see what happens. I think if we're lucky, it should turn out fine. Now, traditionally, so you would have your corn, 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 and then in between you would plant beans, and then the beans would grow up, they'd find the corn stalks, and then uh, grow up twine around them, and then they'd have the support for the corn stalks. So that would be great. Um, we're not actually going to plant beans. We plant the beans somewhere else in the garden. Today, we're just going to do the corn. We're going to plant Hopi blue corn here, and the squash is going to protect it, and it's pretty cool. So we're going to kind of test out the Native American method and uh, see how well it works and see what it does. Okay, so here I have my Hopi blue corn, and I'm going to put the four holes into each mound and then put two or three seeds in each hole, and then it's going to grow and we're going to have some awesome corn. gone through. In every hill I've put four holes, in every hole I've put three seeds. I've covered up every single hole and of course now I'm going to water it to help the seeds germinate. Corn actually needs a huge amount of water. If uh, we don't water the sweet corn properly, if the ground doesn't stay constantly wet, then you could pretty much just like cut a whole foot off the height of the corn um, and the corn just doesn't do as well. So it's incredibly important. The Hopi blue corn is actually drought resistant obviously because it was grown by the Hopis in the deserts of the southwestern United States. Uh, places like Arizona, southern Utah, it's like there's not a lot of rainfall there. So the Hopi blue corn is actually very drought resistant. Apparently they'd plant it eight inches down or so, so that it would find the moisture that's down 
lower in the soil. I've planted it much shallower, uh, about two inches down or so. And of course, we're gonna water it as much as it needs, um, but I'm curious to see how much water it needs and maybe if it just doesn't need as much. So that'll be kind of cool to look at too.